Happy Easter and welcome to one of my favourite days of the year. Thanks for joining us on what is the most important day for Christians around the world. Let's just start with a prayer. Jesus, I want to thank you that you came to earth, that you died and that you rose again. And today, as we celebrate on Easter, help us to unpack this story. Amen. I uh, married my wife Rachel 27 years ago on the 9th of July uh, 1994 and uh, she brought me this wedding ring. Now at the time Rachel had just finished university um, and I was actually still at uni so we didn't have much money so my wife sold her clarinet for my wedding ring. Oh no, the luckiest guy around. Now, I don't know about you, but I have a number of pieces of significant jewellery that mean stuff to me. Just like this wedding ring is a commitment between me and Rach. I have a chain which is really special as well. Now, lots of people wear necklaces today, and they have significant symbols on. A number of you might have a locket with photos of loved ones, or a letter, or even a love heart. But I don't get to see uh, many symbols on a necklace which represent a firing squad. I don't know, maybe you have got one. Or possibly a hangman's noose. You don't normally see those because they're so barbaric. Why would you want to wear something so violent around your neck? But as a Christian, I've got a chain. And on my chain, there is a cross. The cross, which was the most violent torture possible, is something that I choose to wear. Why would I do that? The cross was the most painful death possible. Crucifixion was a sign to others. What would happen if you defied authorities? People were crucified for one of two reasons. Firstly, because you were a slave or a petty criminal. Or secondly, because you set yourself up against the rulers and the authorities of the land. The the Romans crucified thousands upon thousands of people. It was considered so barbaric that their uh, politician, politician Sicero, said this is the most cruel and barbaric form of tortures, and they outlawed crucifixion for Romans. It could not happen. So with it being so horrible, why is the cross so important to Christians? And to answer that question, we have to go right back to the very start. You see, in the beginning, God created the world. He created animals, he created the oceans, the mountains, all vegetation. He created the stars in the sky and he said it was good. But then God created mankind and he said it was very good. Mankind and humans living together in unity. Where God went, man went with him. We were created to be in this close relationship with God. But unfortunately, we didn't want that. Adam and Eve decided that no, they wanted to break the relationship. They wanted to be in charge. They wanted to go here. They wanted to go there. They wanted to go everywhere. It didn't matter because they wanted to be king of their own lives. However, there's a problem with this. You see, we don't control this kingdom. And as soon as they separated from God, they knew they'd broken everything that mattered. The covenant, the love, the feeling of security had all gone. And that very day, they tried to get it back. Adam reached out to God by blaming Eve, but he couldn't get back. Eve reached out to God by blaming the serpent, but she couldn't get back. And the serpent, well, he didn't have a leg to stand on. 
It was too late. Everything had fallen apart. Everything was separated. No matter what they do, they couldn't get back. When I drive to work in the mornings, I go past this piece of road which says, failed road surface, slow. And I think that's what, how we view our lives at times. Yeah, we feel that we've made mistakes, we've done things wrong. I drive along this road, I get a few things wrong, the car bumps up and down, but I'm back on good ground. And that's okay. I might have told a couple of lies. Maybe I did 35 in a 30 mile an hour zone. But generally, I'm a good person. That's all that matters. I've not murdered anyone, I've not killed anyone. I am all right. But who are we to judge? We've broken God's law. It's just like us standing in the Old Bailey, receiving a sentence over us, and then deciding what our punishment is. We are not in that place to do that. Only God can judge. In uh, Revelations 21, it talks about sin and murder having the same effect as far as God is concerned. We have broken his law and there is nothing that we can do to get back. So what do we do about this chasm? Is there any way that we can make a difference? Well, we might try <coughs> to make it right on our own. We might say, okay, I'm going to do some stuff for charity. We might say, I'm going to be kind to people. We might say, I'm going to pay my taxes. We might even try religion, which is basically just man's attempt to reach to God. But as you can see, we can't make it. It doesn't last. There is no way, no matter what we try, to reach God. So what's the answer then? Does that mean we're all doomed? Does that mean it's too late? In Ephesians 2, 6, it says, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit which is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of God's great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It's by grace you've been saved. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. We followed the pattern of the world. We fell just like everybody else. We were in control of looking for our destiny, our future, our purpose. But nothing could fulfil that. We were broken. We were lost. So if we can't bridge this chasm, is there any way across? Or is it all done for? God knows that our road is failing. He knows that there's nothing that you and I can do to bridge the gap. The Bible says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. So God decided to do something about it. It meant doing the impossible. It would cost him everything. It meant making a way to bridge the chasm between him and us. To do that, God needed someone who had never sinned. Humanity was all ruled out. They'd all failed. They had to take the punishment. So God realised he had to do it himself. Jesus came to earth to take the guilt and shame for everything that you and I have done wrong. He did this in one of the recognised most barbaric ways possible. He did it by being crucified. This was not 
a pleasant experience. It started with trumped up charges where the innocence of the defendant was not the question. Having gone through the trial with no charges to answer, in Matthew 27 we read what happens next. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put on a scarlet robe. Then they twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. Then they spat on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. And after they'd mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on. Then they led him away to crucify him. Jesus was a king, so they made him a crown. Not one of gold and precious jewels, but of thorns. And they placed it on his head. And then using the staff, they smashed it again and again and again into his skull. The very people that did that were the people that Jesus determined to die for. That's what the love of my Saviour is like. And having been through all that, Jesus now had to carry the crossbeam to the place of execution. In Roman crucifixion, the crossbeam was typically over two metres long and weighed between 80 and 150 pounds. The vertical beam was four metres long and they stayed at the execution site. So those that were crucified were made to carry the crossbeam from where the sentence was given to the place of crucifixion. Carrying the cross was a sign to all around what would happen if you defied the rulers. It was an insult. It was a humiliation. Showing those watching on that the convict had no power, no authority. That is what's being declared over Jesus on earth. Once the condemned had reached the place where the crucifixion would take place, the cross was formed and the condemned was nailed to it. And above the condemned's head, the charges were placed for being crucified. In Jesus' case, the charges were King of the Jews. But it could have quite as easily been written as with love, because Jesus determined to take all of our sin for us. He determined that he would do whatever it would take, if it meant coming under the most barbaric death possible, to swap places with you and me. He would do that. He didn't cry out. He just, he just took it. He was focused on the punishment that separated us from God. And as my sin nailed him to the cross. And as those in front of him mocked him there and then, he chose to take the punishment for those that were in front of him then. And he chooses to take our punishment today. It was for you and I that he hung on the cross. And as he hung on that cross, taking all the sin of everybody ever, it got to the point where he cried out, It is finished! And he died. And at that moment in the Jewish temple, there's a curtain that separated God from man, that curtain was ripped from top to bottom, making it completely possible for you and I and the whole of humanity to come back into a relationship with God. But if that was the end of Easter, 
And what was the point? We're here on Easter Sunday because Good Friday wasn't the end. Good, uh, Easter Sunday is the day that Jesus came back to life. This is the day we celebrate. Easter, con- Easter Sunday confirms not only did Jesus come back to life, but he took all of our sin. Easter Sunday is the reason we celebrate. Easter Sunday confirms that when Jesus died, not only did he die for our sin, but he came back to life. And that's what's on offer to us. We have a relationship with somebody who is alive. There are 2.3 billion Christians in this world right now who say they have a personal relationship with Jesus. This isn't a made-up story. This is people who know Jesus. And today, you can know him as well. So as I sit on this crossbeam, I find it strong enough that Jesus takes the punishment that I deserve. He made the way for everything that I've done wrong to be sorted. Not through my works, but by his grace. And I come to the end by the cross where I come and find with love Jesus freely accepts me because of what he has done into the kingdom of God. How about you? Because that's what's on offer for you today. 45 years ago, I made that decision. And I can tell you, it's not always been easy, but Jesus has been faithful to me in every single one of those days since then. And he wants to meet with you. He wants you to have a relationship with him today. So if you want that relationship, there's a couple of things we're going to do. Firstly, we're going to pray a prayer. We're going to pray a prayer of repentance, asking God to forgive us for what we've done. And then we're going to respond to Jesus. When you look at Jesus' life on earth, he never called anybody in private. He always called them publicly. So we're going to do two things. If you want to meet Jesus now for the first time or to rededicate your life to him, pray this prayer with me. Father God, thank you that you love me. Thank you for sending Jesus to take my punishment. Forgive me for what I've done wrong. Come and be the leader of my life. And now Jesus freely accepts you if you've prayed that prayer. But I talked about making a public public declaration. And what I want you to do is I want you to take a step just like we were stepping across from our position to God's side. Right now, there's a link in the description that which will take you to the next steps form. Use that as your public declaration. And in the next 48 hours, someone from New Life Church will just be in contact with you just to say hi and encourage you again. Happy Easter. Welcome to his kingdom. God bless.